What's up everyone, I'm back and today we're going to be giving Flat Earther and friend of the channel, Flatsoid, a Flatsoid's perspective, Yo, Flurs. a chance to demonstrate that he is in fact an honest Flat Earther by admitting he was wrong. Let's go. So the other night, in an after show following his debate with the FTFP, Flatsoid brought up this document. It's an official U.S. Marine Corps field manual. Now this is a serious document and very technical and 784 pages long. This is intermediate, I'm a beginner. It explains methods for accurately firing long range artillery. Now Flatsoid spent the beginning of his after show stream looking for a particular page in this document. Apparently he was frustrated he could not locate it during the debate. Nevertheless, he was able to find it during the after show. Let's watch. Look at this, okay? I'm going to go to page four, and we're going to read through this. Now let's see what it says here. Standard conditions, air temperature at 100%, okay, air density, no wind. Position, gun target and entity altitude, accurate range, no rotation of earth. Now to be fair, if you already think there is no rotation and read this coming out of this source, I could see how someone could look at this and honestly think it's evidence that there is no earth rotation. The problem is, Flatsoid, you didn't read on, at least not enough. Yeah, you clicked around to a few other pages in search for something about Coriolis being wind, but that was about it. No worries though, I've got your back, and honestly, I was curious and wanted to understand why it says what it says on page 4 regarding the standard conditions and no earth rotation. So. I carried on searching the document after you ended the stream and went to bed. Let's take a look at what I found. So I believe this is just another honest misunderstanding on your behalf. In this case, it has to do with what is meant by standard conditions. Okay, I'm here in chapter 11 and you see the same table you showed us on page 4. Let me read the sentence real quick. The firing tables used to determine firing data for artillery weapons are based on an arbitrary set of standard conditions of weather, position, and material. Moving on. The first seven columns of table F of the TFT are based on one of two conditions occurring. Condition one, standard conditions are in effect. If standard conditions are in effect, there's no rotation of the earth. Condition two, the sum of the corrections for all non-standard conditions in effect equals zero. Now, it says, it is obvious that the first will never occur. Okay, standard conditions will never occur. No rotation of the earth will never occur. Now this alone should make you realize that standard conditions are not what you thought. They will never occur. Okay, this is not evidence for no rotation of the earth being true. In fact, this will never be true. Moving on. All right, so had you read on, you would have came across this section, deviations from standard conditions. And quickly, what it says is that firing tables are based on actual firings of a piece and its ammunition correlated to a set of standard conditions. Correlated to a set of standard conditions. Actual firing conditions, however, will never equate to standard conditions. These deviations from standard conditions, if not corrected for, when computing firing data will cause the projectile to impact at a point other than the desired location. Corrections for non-standard conditions are made to improve accuracy. Let's see, and there are a few that it talks about. Range effects. Some of the deviations from standard conditions affecting range are muzzle velocity, projectile weight, range wind, air temperature, air density, and of course, rotation of the earth. There's more. There are deflection effects in the real world. Some of the deviations from the standard conditions affecting deflection are drift, crosswind, and rotation of the earth. But let's keep going. Here's a section called massing of fires. Basically what you need to know here is that certain fundamental requirements must be met for two or more units to engage targets effectively together. Skipping down a little bit, the third requirement is valid MET corrections considered by each of the firing platoons. This includes the MET message valid for a firing platoon, propellant temperatures, projectile weight, vertical interval, and corrections for earth rotation. 
down in section 7-11, table H, A, reads, Table H is used in the solution of concurrent and subsequent MET. The extracted value is the correction to range in meters for the rotation of the Earth at zero degrees latitude. A correction for any other latitude is extracted from the small table at the bottom of table H and is multiplied by the correction for the table. Just below that, 7, 12, table I. Table I is used in a solution on concurrent and subsequent MET. There are tables for every 10 degrees latitude starting from 0 degrees north or south latitude to 70 degrees north or south latitude. The extracted value is the correction to deflection in mills for the rotation of the Earth. This page I like, it just describes one of many methods they use in order to improve their accuracy. This one's called the 8 direction MET technique and it provides corrections to range, deflection, and few settings to compensate for the effects of ballistic wind direction and speed and for rotation of the earth throughout the firing unit's area of responsibility. All right, skipping down to the glossary now, it defines drift, which is the lateral deviation of the trajectory from the plane of departure as caused by the rotation of the earth. As a result, the horizontal projection of trajectory is curved. A little further down, it defines predicted fire as the delivery technique of applying accurately computed corrections, not determined by firing, to standard firing data for all non-standard conditions, including weather, weapon, ammunition, and rotation of the earth. Lastly, I had to include this one, Coriolis effect, the change in range or azimuth caused by the rotational effects of the earth. So you misunderstand what it means by standard conditions. There's absolutely no denying that the U.S. military uses the rotation of the Earth in their calculations extensively. Fatsoid, you have an opportunity to prove to the community what I've been saying all along, that you are in fact honest, and you can show that you can admit when you're wrong. I really hope you do. I think it would be a big mistake refusing to in this case. So, come on, buddy. To everyone else, if you're not already subscribed and you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.